Mobile phones are no longer just another communication device. Rather, they are a complete connectivity platform. Today, a mobile phone allows the user to bank, shop, trade, pay bills, book tickets and a plethora of other uses. The phone can even be used to access a host of M governance services offered to the citizens by the government. Besides the obvious, there is a whole wide world of entertainment at your fingertips from music, movies, games, video calls to social networking sites such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Mobile phones have truly revolutionized the way we live. But how do mobile networks operate? In verbal communication, sound is created through vibration of vocal cords, which produces air waves, which then travel through the air to the ear of the receiver. This is then perceived and interpreted by the brain as sound. When we communicate through electronic devices, such as in mobile communications, the voice is translated into electronic impulses and transmitted through the air. This conversion using electricity and electronics creates an electromagnetic field commonly referred to as an EMF. Such electromagnetic fields are not new to humans. The rays from the sun are a part of the everyday EMF that we are exposed to. We simply cannot move a muscle or produce a thought without an electrical pulse. And wherever there is electricity, a magnetic field is also produced which is why we link them together as electromagnetic fields or EMF. In a simpler way, from the good old telegraph to the radios, television, microwaves, walkie-talkies, computer screens, refrigerators, hair dryers, music players, cars, bulbs and the sun, they all produce EMFs. We have been living with such devices and gadgets from Marconi's age. Radio waves can be broadly categorized into two types, ionizing and non-ionizing. Ionizing waves such as those used for diagnostics and radiotherapy like in CT scan, X-rays, etc. have the ability to ionize matter, that is, to break chemical bonds in the human body. They have the potential to cause harm to humans, yet they are safe because they are regulated for safety through their dosage and exposure of safety limits. Whereas non-ionizing waves, such as those emitted by cell phones and antenna on towers, do not carry enough energy to break any chemical bond within cells and tissues in the human body. We've been using X-ray radiation now for more than 115 years um, and we still haven't been able to establish the relationship of cancer and radiation to any great extent. Now, mobile tower radiation is different. It's not even X-ray radiation. It is um, inherently a type of radiation that we believe does not produce any kind of significant harm at the distances that we work with from the tower. The cell phone photons do not have enough energy to cause a mutation in your DNA, period. No matter what their power is, the power density from the sun received on the earth is typically 1000 watts per square meter while that at the base of a cell phone tower is 10,000 times smaller at about 0.1 watts per square meter. Everything on this earth has a safety limit. If those limits are not maintained, then even a life-saving drug like penicillin becomes dangerous. If you stand under the sun, you will gain vitamin D. But if you stand for way too long, then you are at the risk of suffering a sunburn or heat stroke. So it's all about safety norms. We have safety norms for cars, medicines, buildings and likewise. There are stringent safety norms for mobile tower emissions too. But what are these safety norms for mobile phones and antennas on mobile towers? And how safe is safe? The industry is very, very concerned about safety norms and the exposure uh, of the citizenry to the emissions from our towers and handsets. The government of India is the responsible entity that sets the safety norms not only for our industry but for every other industry that operates in India. The government of India after extensive consultation and uh, investigation of the matter has decided in 2008 
to adopt the best in standard in terms of safety. The safety limits for mobile telephony was set in 1998 by the International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection, ICNIRP, an international agency that is recognized by the World Health Organization. The limits were set after monitoring and studying research reports on the effect of EMF on human health from across the world. Such studies include both negative and positive research reports and are based on the weight of evidence methodology. These limits are also reviewed regularly to take note of any scientific or research updates. It is the considered view of WHO that there is no convincing scientific evidence that the low power from base stations and wireless networks cause any adverse health effects. The online question and answer on the issue from WHO in September 2013 has stated very clearly that studies to date provide no indication that environmental exposure to RF fields such as from base stations increases the risk of cancer or any other disease. The WHO and ICNIRP have concluded that the emission levels of non-ionizing waves are absolutely safe at the prescribed safety limits. People at WHO in Geneva are basically administrators. What they do when they have a topic like EMF is they get the best brains together in a committee in Geneva or wherever and say we want to do a review of the literature, we want you to come up with the recommendations and conclusions that then WHO can publish. The ICNIRP limits are globally followed by over 90% of the countries. India too adopted ICNIRP safety limits in 2008. However, in response to public concerns, the Government of India in 2012 adopted EMF limits that are one-tenth of ICNIRP as a matter of abundant precaution and to build in a further safety margin. India now has one of the strictest EMF safety limits in the world. In fact, in a recent submission to the Ministry of Communications and Information Technology, 25 leading academicians from the prestigious IITs and IISC in India have urged the government to exercise caution to avoid ad hoc decisions regarding restrictions of tower locations and avoid unnecessary panic and fear among citizens. The WHO and the French government expert group ANSES in 2012 have concluded that there is no health hazard from mobile phone radiation. It has been seconded by an 11-year-long study conducted by the Mobile Telecommunications and Health Research Programme MTHR of the UK in 2014. If you look at the American registry which is called SEER database which is one of the most robust and widely followed databases in their series in the last 10 to 15 years there has not been any increase in brain cancer while we know one of the obvious reasons is the use of cell phones and mobile phone technology and there has been a tremendous rapid increase of cell phone and mobile phone use uh, for the last 15-20 years so there should have been a corresponding increase in brain cancer which has not been the case in most of the American and European data. Though another WHO body, International Agency for Research on Cancer Classification IARC has put EMF in the list of possibly carcinogenic substances along with coffee, talcum powder and pickled vegetables. This was primarily related to some research related to the usage of mobile phones. In respect of exposure from mobile towers, the IARC has said that there is inadequate evidence to establish a causal association between exposure and cancer. Thousands of global studies have not established any harmful effect of EMF emissions. However, to ensure India-specific studies on the impact of EMF on humans, the Government of India has asked the Department of Science and Technology and the Indian Council of Medical Research to carry out extensive studies to measure the impact of EMF from antenna to mobile towers on humans and the environment. Tata Memorial Center at Mumbai is also carrying out a study on the health effect of EMF on humans. As far as Tata Memorial Center is concerned, we are asking one question, uh, whether this uh, radio frequency emitted by the mobile phone is potential carcinogen 
and is one of the risk factor for the brain tumors. An expert committee constituted in compliance to the directions of the Honorable High Court Allahabad, Lucknow Bench, has recommended in January 2014 that there is no cause of alarm with regard to possible ill effects on human health by electromagnetic field emission from cell phone towers and cell phones because the safety limits adopted in India take into account all biological effects of radiation. The government is also strictly monitoring and enforcing the safety limits prescribed by it. The Department of Telecommunications has entrusted its Telecom Enforcement Resource and Monitoring Wing or the TERM cells to audit and ensure compliance on the same. Defaulters are subjected to a heavy penalty as high as rupees 10 lakhs. India has one of the strictest safety norms in the world. The Indian industry is fully compliant with the Government of India prescribed emissions levels and ensures complete safety for the public at large. We are fully compliant and safe. We don't have uh, the very strong evidence in the animals or sufficient evidences in the human being that the mobile phone use causes the cancer. Mobile phone technology is a lowest end of spectrum and does not cause any DNA kill. Mobile phones don't cause any head cancers or any other health effects. Emissions from mobile tower antenna are absolutely safe at the prescribed safety limits. Confirmed by the World Health Organization and ICNIRP. Confirmed by the Government of India. Confirmed by eminent authorities, doctors and experts of the field. India has a very strict emission norms for mobile towers and phones.